Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Brain Gist. Today, I want to talk to you about a test called nerve conduction test or nerve conduction study, or what some people call NCS, NCV. It gets different kinds of names. If you've ever been to the neurologist, um, one of the commonest set of tests they tend to request is um, a nerve conduction test or a nerve conduction study. Um, and then a lot of patients ask me this question before they come for the test. Once you've consulted and I've told them, you know, that they need this test and they ask, you know, what does this test entail? What does it look like? Is it painful? You know, what should we expect? So this video is uh, dedicated to educating you about what this test is about and then of course it will be an important reference point for my patients who would subsequently be asked to do this test so i can usually uh, refer them to this video to you know have some explanation of what to expect during the test so in case you're new to the channel welcome this is brain gist it's a channel dedicated to educating people about diseases of the brain and the nerves and all other disorder, all the disorders that could affect any of this, the central nervous, the nervous system in its entirety. So if you like the contents, I encourage you to subscribe and stay tuned for more interesting and educative videos like this one. All right, so the nerve conduction study, it, the name is quite self-explanatory. So it is a study dedicated to the nerves and these are peripheral nerves. So the nerves help us to do virtually everything we do, like moving the arms, even feeling sensation. The nerves help us to do all of us. And they can either conduct signals to the brain or bring signals from the brain. Sometimes when patients complain of different symptoms, it points us towards a disease of the nerves or the nerve roots of the spinal cord or of the brain. So this test, nerve conduction study, is usually requested when your neurologist has some concern that you may have some disease of your nerves or some disorder of your nerves, be it um, a systemic disease affecting the nerves or a more diffuse disease affecting the nerves or it is a more localized problem affecting the nerves. So there is some concern about the nerve or sometimes the concern about the muscle or the relationship between the nerve and the muscle. There must have been some concern in that regard. And then, so this test helps us to know how well your nerves are functioning. And then we can study nerves and the, ha and the arms we can study nerves in the legs. We can study nerves um, in the face. So it depends on the question that we're trying to answer. So that's the real indication for this test. And what does this test entail? It entails us, this test, you know, visualizes the nerves like conducting wires. That's how they, how they look like actually, even though they are living, they are alive. But then we picture them like wires. So if you imagine an electrical cable, you've got the real wire inside, perhaps a copper wire, and you've got the insulation around it. That's exactly how you can conceptualize the nerves. So along the path of the nerve in the body, we apply some small electrical impulse, and then we expect the nerve, being an electrical cable, quote and unquote, to conduct that impulse down the line and be recorded at some other point. So that's what we do in nerve conduction study. So we stimulate the nerve at some point along its course in the body, and then we record the response or the conduction of that impulse along the nerve at another point. So the principle of a test is if this nerve is healthy, then you expect it to conduct wherever impulse you've applied down the line and you should be able to record an optimum amount of response at the recording point. 
and then besides recording a good amount of response you expect the signals to travel through the nerve at the right speed and arrive within the expected time so we have a, a, a range of normality over which or within which we expect you know the amplitude or the size of response to fall or to, to lie and then there is also a window within of, of speed of conduction or velocity of conduction within which we expect a response to be so all of these factors will help us to you know decide about the health of that nerve whether it's a single nerve or multiple nerves then whatever information we get will permutate this information to arrive at a conclusion at what we think is going on with the nerve and that guides us further so the nerve conduction study is often not a um, an end in itself it's actually a means to an end the overall aim is to diagnose what is wrong with the nerves so the nerve conduction test tells us which nerves are unhealthy at what point in their course are they unhealthy and then may suggest and guide as to possible causes and then you may now need to search for those possible causes to arrive at your diagnosis now is this test painful it's not exactly painful it's a very small amount of pulse that you're delivering to the nerve at the area just beneath the skin in the area where the nerve is superficial and then you record and i'm going to be showing um at the end of this video i'm going to be showing you a practical example of exam a practical example of a test being done and you would see it's not painful so overall it's just a little bit of electrical pulse that you feel and then it's recorded downstream and then how long does this test last typically most of the time depending on how many nerves we're starting and the extent of the disease so you can expect to get through the test most of the time within 45 minutes to 60 minutes it can be quicker or it can be shorter um, but usually within 45 minutes to 60 minutes we would usually be through with all the tests and the nerves we need to test and we'll be able to um, explain to you what we found in layer terms and you can understand and then we usually would draft up a more a scientific report and send to your doctor in a way manner that will guide them towards the search for the cause of your nerve disease now the second part of it is there is something we call emg that's electromyography which is like the a twin part of the test i like to talk to my patients this way there's a twin study if you talk about twin towers for example so um, sometimes we stop after the nerve conduction test vocation or so, some other times we decide to do the second part of the test which is called the emg emg is a short form for electromyography electromyography or emg is not done always but sometimes after the nerve conduction test we think we need more information you know to have um, a better conclusion or to better understand what we found the nerve test and then therefore we proceed to what is called the needle emg that involves recording from the muscles but i'm not going to talk about that today i'm probably going to make another dedicated video to explain what uh, an emg is so this doesn't get unduly long and boring so now let's go to the lab and see what the nerve conduction test is like thank you for watching so far so this is the neurophysiology lab where we do all the tests the nerve conductions and emg but today i'll just be showing the nerve conduction so this is the machine that we use so this is the screen and this is um, like the processing unit and this is the stimulator that our beautiful technician is holding and then this is the panel that connects um, everything together and then we've got um, the electrodes so these ones are the electrodes that help to record the signals and then again the nerve that we study depends on the question we're trying to answer clinically so this one the doctor wants to know if this beautiful young lady has got what we call kappa tunnel syndrome or not so the interest is the median nerve is a nerve that runs all the way from the arm and it runs through here and runs all the way to this place. 
So the doctor suspects that there is a compression of a nerve around here. So our technology is going to be stimulating the nerve just before the suspected area of compression about around here. And then we're going to be recording here. And the signals here tell us about the health of the nerve from here down to here. Please, you can go ahead. So it's just a little pulse. And then we can see, you can see, you can see her face, she's not even feeling any, any pain. Is it painful? No, no. All oh, right. It's just a bit of shock, but not, not, not much. No. Okay, great. So if you can come closer to the screen, we can see, this is the sort of waveform that we see on the screen that tells us about the nerve. We can see the size of the response, quite beautiful, 75, and we can see the delay about 3.4, which falls within the normal ring, isn't it? Yes, yes, okay, lovely. So this is the sensory part of the test, and now we go on to the motor part of the test. You can take a pause. You started? Okay, so now we're gonna to go to the motor part of the test. The first one was the sensory part. So this nerve is called the sensory part and then motor part. So again, you can put the test between the motor part. Say so now the first electrode is on the belly of the muscle, and then the reference electrode is somewhere on the thumb. Mm -hmm. And then she's going to be stimulating at the same point here to cross the area of suspected compression, and then we'll be recording from the belly of the muscle. You're going to be seeing some twitches, isn't it, Salini? Yes. Okay, lovely. So we're starting. Mm -hmm. Just focus on, the, focus on what she's doing. So she's delivering the, the impulse, and we're seeing a little twitch, and there's a response on the monitor. Okay. All right, she keeps doing that until she's satisfied with the response. Okay, she keeps increasing the pulse. Okay. Okay, so now she is satisfied and she's told me she's got a maximum response. So we can see a beautiful response above 6.66 and the delay is about 3.75. Well, all of this fall within the normal limit. So we know that certainly this lady does not have Capitano syndrome at the moment. Yeah. So it means that that the nerve is healthy, at least from the segments. So we've answered the clinical question here. And this is what the nerve conduction study is all about. So thank you, Salini. Mm -hmm. And uh, tell us about your experience very briefly. How was the experience? Um, it's, not, it's not uncomfortable. It, it's very, um, there's just a bit of a shock, but it's not that much. So oh, all right. It's okay, yeah. Right. I've had a carpal tunnel syndrome before, and it's, it is not it. Like, this is very minimal. All right. <laughs> Thank you. So most people are able to tolerate a test. And Salini, averagely, how much time do you spend on this test, averagely? For this test? Yes. Maybe. For most patients who come for the test. How, how long does it take to finish the test? Half an hour. Half an hour. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks for watching today. See you next time.